A new bends on the horizon. On a cold, clear November Monday, the end of an era in Atlanta. The Georgia Dome falls almost 28 years after construction first began. It is a different Atlanta in 2017 than the one that we saw in 1989 when they first broke ground. The impetus for the stadium was the Atlanta Falcons. In 1989, the Falcons were the worst team in football. They were getting ready to fire their head coach. Many people in this community thought, what a waste. What purpose will this stadium eventually serve? Well, the answer certainly has come 28 years later. When you think about the myriad of events that have occurred in this facility, what it has meant here, much like the airport, it has been an economic engine not only to the city, to the state, but to the region. And now it falls. It goes away in less than a half hour, but its legacy remains. Now we go to International Plaza right now as Chesley and Sheba are standing by as well. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Really appreciate it. We are nestled in between the Phillips Arena, Georgia World Congress Center, and the dome is right here behind us. You can see now that the sun is starting to rise. The holes that they took off in the top, they did some prep oh, on now the. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, they did some preps on it already, so uh, it's set to implode here pretty soon. There are a number of media crews here. We've seen a drone just fly above, <laughs> and the helicopters are set up as well. The Georgia World Congress Center getting the building all prepared. They put up a plastic, some plastic sheets right across the doors and the windows here as well. So, and Mercedes-Benz Stadium, we saw the lights go out. We are getting ready for the implosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not long now, not long now. A lot of memories, folks sharing a lot of memories with yeah. us as well. So uh, a lot of concerts, Whitney Houston. Yeah, one of the last big ones was you Beyonce. Too? Yeah. Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so. Falcons. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Jeff, back to you. <laughs> Well, I think everybody has their own memories of what they are feeling and experiencing. I was part of the coverage when the first announcement came with Governor Joe Frank Harris and the late Atlanta Falcons owner Rankin Smith Sr. as they made the announcement along uh, with Mayor Young also that this facility would be built. And it has been extraordinary in the life and times of the city. And now in the span of 12 seconds, all of that history, all of that planning, all of that political maneuvering that it took to get built, will fall and fall very quickly. There has been a team here in Atlanta now for four months preparing. They have spent 35,000 hours for those 12 seconds that will fall so very quickly. It is a moment when you hear the oohs and the ahs from the people. A massive building comes crashing down. It's a story of now you see it, now you don't. But what many don't understand is that this is a tedious and a laborious project. We bring in a crane and pick down those beams. As I walked the dome with Rick Capatilli of Adamo, he gave us a real sense of how this will all work. There's four months of progress and 35,000 plus man hours involved. There's everything removed inside but what we need to blow out. The lower bowl's gone, uh, all the offices, all the vending, all the interior walls. It's customary to run into problems, but he takes it all in stride. The degree important. of difficulty for you knocking this down in comparison to other projects around the country, is it, is it more difficult or is it pretty much about the same? The degree of difficulty here and the added difficulty is the close proximity of the GWCC building you see behind us there, uh, the brand new Mercedes Dome. Uh, we're used to that. We've taken out a lot of structures, um, stadiums. The unique part about this is the roof and the ring structure is unique. It's the only one. How so? There's not another one been built like it, so there's not been one demolished like it. So is there concern about it will go according to your plan? There was concern. We worked through extensive modeling. So the question that everybody wants to know is how long will this take? Structure is almost ready to fall. When everybody sees it fall on the 20th in 12 seconds, 12 seconds, 12 seconds all the implosions will be done, it will be collapsed. They think, wow, that was quick. They just showed up and set the dynamite. So the other question that has been asked so many times, who will get to push the button to bring the dome down? Maybe Governor Harris, maybe Governor Young, maybe Taylor Smith, part of the Smith family. 
of the late Rankin Smith, there's not going to be any drama at all. Somebody with Adamo, the company that's bringing it down, simply will use a, a mechanism, much like a cell phone, hit a button, and that's it. No drama, no theater, nothing. It will just fall. Chesley, yeah. Sheba, over to you. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Wow, that's, that that's, makes sense. That just makes like cool. The movies, yeah, right? absolutely. You know, there's a lot of people watching this thing from all over the place. Of course. Lots of watch parties. We have a lot of viewers on our Facebook page, some from Australia and Spain, mm -hmm. watching, yeah, waiting for the morning. implosion. And there are a number of watch parties happening all over the city. Jennifer Leslie is at one atop the Sundial restaurant. Jennifer. Yeah. Sheba and Chesley, you can see the crowd behind us. They opened the doors uh, just before 7 o'clock, and they've started to fill in 200 guests here who want the perfect view of this implosion. And you can see right out these windows here. I'm going to crouch down so you don't see my reflection in the windows here. But you can see what a view we have. And here's what's really interesting. As the sun has been rising this morning, we've been able to get a closer look at the roof. And you can see there are holes in the roof. Did we lose something? Mm -hmm. All right, so traffic will be an issue. Marta has changed his schedule as well. For more on that now, let's go over to Jerry Carnes. Good morning, Jerry. We're coming up. Hey, good morning, Chesley McNeil. Uh, things have been getting busy here at the corner of Northside Drive and Joseph E. Boone Boulevard. As the sun comes up, you can see all the cars parked here. That's people driving down here, hoping to get a glimpse of this big implosion. In fact, here's some folks right here now, all nice and bundled up but they're not gonna get any further than the barricades that you see here over there. We're at Northside Drive again, and Joseph E. Boone, about a quarter mile from the Georgia Dome, there you can see the roof right up there. Say goodbye to it, because it's going away very, very soon. Take a look at this map, and you can see where the uh, restricted zone is. That's everything that you're about to see here in the red. Everything uh, south of Northside Drive and Joseph E. Boone all the way down to MLK and then over to the east to Centennial Olympic Park. That area there, you're not going to be able to drive. You're not going to be able to walk into that area. So if you come down into this area at all, be aware of that. If you're just a commuter hoping to get through, traveling down Northside Drive or any of the adjacent roadways, just be aware you're going to be turned away. And even if you're walking, these folks are nice and bundled up, hoping to get a good view. This is as far as you're going to be able to get. Not a bad view from here. Not perfect, not bad, but you can't get down into that area now, Crash Clark, as you know. And if anybody can get people around this, it's you. <laughs> Actually, look at this camera we have set up right here. This is one of our Sky Tracker cameras. I mean, it is right down the street. In fact, GDOT tells me they don't think this camera is going to survive. So if you want a cool view, stay right here at 11 Alive, because when this thing goes, you're going to see that dust cloud go right towards this camera and maybe take it out completely. All right, folks, real quick to the rush hour. Still some heavy delays along that west wall and downtown. If you are making your way there, you want to brave the cold and some of the crowds. Just remember, as Jerry said, mainly north side drive closed. Ivan Allen to MLK. And if you take Marta, remember anything west of five points closed off, including the Georgia Dome and Vine city stations. They do have shuttle buses set up. In fact, there's one running every five to seven minutes, so you will definitely get around it. But there's the best place to watch it right there. If you want to go hang out with Jennifer Leslie. All right, Sheba, Chesley, back to you guys. It looks like we're uh, about 22 minutes away. Oh, we're getting excited <laughs> and the sun is coming up. It's getting a little warmer out here as yeah. well. Folks are starting to pack up and move inside. Look at that. Yeah, they're trying to leave yeah. us. We People don't want to be the last one. suits on right next <laughs> to us. We don't want to be the last that, one but... standing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, let's send it to you. Well, there are so many memories to be thinking about today. You know, you think about Deion Sanders. The day after the Braves had won the world championship in 1995, Falcons take on the Cowboys in Sanders with his famous, this is my house line. That was a moment we will never forget inside the dome. Or how about Jeff George mixing it up with June Jones, who was a head coach at the time. That was the end of Jeff George here when it looked like maybe he was going to be the best quarterback in the National Football League, not inside that facility. His career, for all practical purposes, was done after that. So many memories inside this dome involving football, concerts, the Olympics, monster trucks. Where to begin? As we go to break, time for a little more history. Did you know the groundbreaking of the dome took place on November 22nd, 1989, and the work was finally completed on March 1st, 1992. 
Your parents love their grandkids, but what if they tried to use the law to take your kids from you? Can they even do that? In Georgia, they can. We'll show you just how far one father went to keep his child. Tonight on The Late Feed. To those with diabetes, mealtime is really time to think about insulin. When do I prepare? Where do I inject? But if Reza lets you inhale your insulin when food arrives, even unexpectedly, so you can be spontaneous and not rely solely on injections. Afresa is a rapid-acting inhaled insulin used to control adult diabetes. Afresa can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. Afresa is not for patients with chronic lung disease, such as asthma or COPD. Tell your doctor if you smoke, recently stopped smoking, have ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Afrezza if you are allergic to insulin. Get some dessert. Talk to your doctor before changing your Afrezza dose. Blood sugar may need to be checked more frequently. Ask your doctor if Afrezza inhalable insulin is right for you. Six Flags lights up into a spectacular winter wonderland. Presenting Holiday in the Park with millions of twinkling lights, holiday entertainment, Plus, world-class thrill rides. Don't miss the Six Flags Cyber Sale. Now through Cyber Monday, save up to 70% on 2018 season passes with free admission to Holiday in the Park. Plus, get a free upgrade to gold with free parking and free whitewater passes. Hurry, this incredible offer ends Cyber Monday. Fast internet is only the beginning. Comcast Business offers a network of high-performance services built to help your business do business. Internet with speeds up to one gig, a range of phone systems, including cloud-based solutions, and advanced video monitoring with Comcast Business Smart Office. With more than a million Ethernet-enabled buildings and 149,000 fiber root miles, we've got you covered. Call today and get fast internet, then add phone and TV for just $34.90 per month. Comcast Business, built for business. All right, welcome back, folks. Yeah, you know, Atlanta's not new to implosions. You know, no, it's back in, them, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> 1997 was the year that Fulton County Stadium came down. Remember that? Mm -hmm, yeah. Well, Jerry Carnes was covering that for us. Yeah. We saw That's some old video of him. That's how I remember watching his video. Right, of course, right. I was not here for that. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, after that was the Omni as well, or right around the same period of time was the Omni. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, I guess, fond or bittersweet memories of implosions around Atlanta. Yep, absolutely. So we're going to go over to Jeff Hollinger. What, a little bit more. Hey, Jeff. I'm going to just shut my broadcaster's mouth and leave you with your final thoughts and warm memories as we all say goodbye to an old friend. Well, if you were to take one moment that really helped create the energy and the politics and the business to help create this facility behind me, it would have to be when Rankin Smith, who was the owner of the Atlanta Falcons at the time, magically, mysteriously showed up at the Gator Bowl before a huge throng in Jacksonville in 1987 for a pep rally. And he was threatening to move the Falcons to Jacksonville. And with that, Governor Harris and everybody else in government said, we have to do something, and they did. Okay, here goes. I believe the Dome's legacy will be to the economic vibrancy of a burgeoning international and national city and less to the mythology of sport. Now, think about other imploded or wrecking ball stadiums, even those you may be too young to remember. And there is always an emotional moment grabbing your heart. Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, 20 years after its implosion, and we still think about Hank Aaron's home run to eclipse Babe Ruth and to change America for the better or the Braves' unforgettable galvanizing season inside in 1991, or the Falcons' expansion into the NFL with Norm Van Brocklin and his bite of the big time. But the Georgia Dome is different. Construction began in 1989. There is a great old story of how we landed the 1994 Super Bowl here before the stadium had even broken ground with the NFL commissioner Paul Tagliabue arriving 
somebody had to be dispatched to put up a fake tent with a bulldozer to give the appearance that work was set to begin. <laughs> that is the Atlanta that we all know. Progress never is stopped because of a few details that might get in the way, like stadium construction. Shall I list the building began in 1989 and was finished in 1992 or chronicle the more than 200 Falcons games, two NFC title games, two Super Bowls, SEC title games, 1996 Olympics, motocross, YouTube, Final Fours, the Tornado of 08, Michael Jordan versus the Hawks, Chick-fil-A games, high school games, even the Sugar Bowl after Katrina, or how about me hosting Football 101 with Dr. Laura? No, not really. That is a true story. The Georgia Dome had wonderful, dramatic sports moments, but it will be remembered as an economic tool toward Atlanta's development and without it, the $1.5 billion Mercedes-Benz Stadium, a lob wedge away, might not have been possible. The Georgia Dome is, or was, the sporting equivalent of Hartsfield-Jackson. Prosperous, buoyant, and economically evergreen. An extraordinary investment of $214 million a generation ago. Thanks, Governor Joe Frank Harris. Thanks, Mayor Andrew Young. And thanks to the late Falcons owner, Rankin Smith Sr. Quite the gift. So I've had a lot of people, guys, that, that have asked me, what is my favorite memory inside the Dome? I, I think it has to be the last football game, January 22nd of this year when they beat the Green Bay Packers for the NFC Championship. That, that really is the cherry on top of the Sunday as far as this building goes. How about you guys? <laughs> I remember watching you, Jeff, follow Arthur Blank around after that, trying to get his reaction oh, to yeah. what a marvelous game. That was probably one of my fondest memories as well. I was at that game, but also the Battle of the Bands. When they had the Battle of the Bands oh, here, oh, yeah. it's always a good time. Yeah. Always a good time right here at the Dome. All right, so we're also talking about what if the Dome was never built. Hmm. Let's turn to Joe Henke for that. At the old age of 25, the Georgia Dome is coming down, but what would have Atlanta been without it? Let's head back to 1989, a time before the Dome in the Atlanta we know today. The Dome's home looked like this, an industrial piece of land on the other side of the train tracks. To the west are the Vine City and English Avenue neighborhoods. From 89 to 2013, Invest Atlanta wrote $103 million in development loans for those two neighborhoods. Little change, though, and from above, there is not much noticeable development. During many of the Dome's years, it was known for broken promises, vacant buildings, and crime. To the north and east, though, Atlanta got a makeover. Georgia World Congress Center's footprint grew twice in 1992 and 2002. And tourists, they began lining up in the Dome's shadow. 1996, Centennial Olympic Park brought Atlanta together. 1997, the Omni Coliseum went away. In 99, the Hawks, they landed at its replacement, Phillips Arena. In 2005, the ocean came to the ATL at the Georgia Aquarium. And in 2007, the world of Coca-Cola popped up in its current location. 2014, the National Center for Civil and Human Rights opened and the College Football Hall of Fame kicked off in downtown. After hosting more than 1,400 events, 37 million guests, and creating $7 billion plus dollars of economic development in and around the Dome, its days are done. Now we will have to see how Atlanta changes during the life of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Hmm. Wow. Can you imagine that? If there was no dome. If there was no dome, we would lose <laughs> all that money. That's right. right? And who knows if the Olympics would, he, would, have, would have even come here. Well, they had to use other venues. Maybe, yes. But, uh, yeah, no yes. basketball, gymnastics, or handball, which was played in there. Yeah, but that definitely helped bring the Olympics here. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, more Georgia Dome coverage after the break. We're counting down less than 15 minutes now. They say morning news is all the same. The traditional format. The same type of stories every day. It's time for something different. A better way to start your day. Keeping you on top of the trend. Wake up and get in on the morning rush. We traveled the world sampling the best cheese for two reasons. One, to bring them all back for you to enjoy. And two, we got to eat a bunch of really good cheese along the way. Publix Deli Specialty Cheese. Over 36 varieties to fall in love with. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure.
There are 65,924 storytellers online. Make your work stand out with the beautiful website. Make it Squarespace. We the champions. In order to affirm our tradition of unwavering faith, ignite a passion for wisdom, challenge perspectives, inspire creativity and pursue knowledge, do resolve to be the voice for the voiceless, bring healing to the hurting, fight for the oppressed, defend freedom, defy stereotypes, and follow God's calling wherever it may lead. This is the low rate for the Delta Community Car Loan that bought the car for commuting to the job, that built the savings account, financing the vacation, that took his life in a new direction, creating another happy story in Atlanta. For more than 75 years, Delta Community has served Metro Atlanta. Who knows what can happen in the next 75? Delta Community Credit Union, everything your bank should be. Ready to take your business to another level? Tired of the same old traditional real estate models with desk fees and giving away commission? Exit Southeast reinvents real estate with Georgia franchise opportunities. Regional owner Kenny Lynn is looking for top brokers and salespeople. In three short years, Exit Realty Southeast has grown over 400%. Do you know any other business that can do this? I'm number one in developing franchises and I want to work with you. This is not just a game changer, it's a life changer. Contact ExitSoutheast.com today. Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, we got some crews staying out here, and this is what they're going to have to wear to stay out here to watch the implosion. Yeah, serious masks. <laughs> uh, and we've seen a number of people out here where the media is staged wearing hazmat suits as well. So people are getting geared up. We are, what, less than 10 minutes away oh, now yeah. from the Georgia Dome imploding. And uh, people are gathering at watch parties, and people are gathered on the ground waiting for the Georgia Dome to implode, and Jennifer Bellamy is out with some of those folks on the north side of the dome. Jennifer? Good morning, guys. We are still here near Northside Drive, and take a look at all of this. This Exxon parking lot is full of people who have parked. You can see folks just standing around, children climbing on top of vehicles. Lots of folks that are around here hoping to catch a glimpse of the dome as it comes down. Now, uh, Jojo, if we can come back around here, there are even people climbed up around fences over here. We've been telling you all morning that North Side has been closed and people are just here coming as close as they can possibly get to the scene to watch. We've even seen some folks with their own camera equipment hoping to uh, capture the moment from the posterity and also a lot of folks out here with lots of cell phones, coffee in hand, braving the cold weather to say goodbye to the dome in person. Sheba and Chesley, back to you. Oh, she'll miss it. She's a she big time will. Falcon fan. She yeah. will. Gosh, we should have asked her just how many games she's attended inside oh, yeah. the Georgia Dome. Mm. But um, yeah, I think everyone will be sad to see the Georgia Dome go, but really happy on, to, to know what's on the horizon as we're talking about the Home Depot backyard. Oh, yeah. And also the hotel that's going to be set up to um, pretty much welcome more people into this area of downtown Atlanta. Yeah, we've been talking about the dust and the debris. The winds are light, so it won't travel too far, but uh, it will take months for them to clean it all up. It will. Yep, it be, will. The implosion is next, folks. Stay tuned for the implosion. It's coming up. We needed to get rid of that gold frame shower. I wanted to open up the kitchen by removing a wall. And I wanted a huge island for the kids. We needed an expert to do it all for us. If you live in a home built 15 or more years ago, you need to know about Remodeling Expo Center. My friends can't believe how amazing my kitchen turned out. We were given a schedule, they stuck to it, and they completed on time. Call us now to schedule a consultation or stop by our showroom. 
It's time to get your home ready for the holidays with a trip to Woodstock Furniture and Mattress Outlet. Buy brand name furniture and mattresses at low outlet prices with 0% interest for three years, plus guaranteed delivery for Thanksgiving. With low outlet prices, no interest for three years, and guaranteed delivery for Thanksgiving, you can turn your home into a holiday showcase for less. Shop today and get guaranteed delivery by Thanksgiving, only at Woodstock Furniture and Mattress Outlet. My friends, here it is. This is the end of the going out of business sale right here at Roswell Rug Company. Your time is completely run out to get in here, make your final selections from Oriental rugs from around the world. These are all handmade, not machine made rugs that you can buy in some flea market. This is the good stuff. And listen to this, it's all 70% off. It's only if you get here in time. Your home deserves this kind of quality. And at 70% off, how can you say no? No price beats the going out of business price. You gotta hurry. Put a little love in your heart. You'll see it's getting see late. It's getting late. Oh, please, oh, don't, please don't hesitate. Put a little, little love, love in your heart. 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 Going on now, our Subaru Share the Love event will have donated over $115 million to those in need. When this was fun, Hello? Hey, how are you? Okay, Google, how far is 520 Broadway? Show me pictures of peony bouquets. The watch that brings your life to life. Available at Dillard's. Get Black Friday savings now through Saturday at Toys R Us. Like 60% off Crayola coloring kits and 40% off Little People Farm and Home sets and $30 off Cosmo Collector's Edition. Hurry, sale and Saturday. Toys R Us. Today we play. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeff Hellinger on this frosty Monday morning here. Thanksgiving week, so much to see, so much to think about. We are about three minutes away from the implosion of the Georgia Dome. And, you know, people have different thoughts, observations about what this facility has meant to them during the course of the last 25 years, perhaps taking your family to see football games or concerts or to the 1996 Olympics. I think the feeling with this building is a little bit different as opposed to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. When Atlanta Fulton County Stadium was was uh, brought down in the late 1990s, I think there was a lot more emotion from people. This building has been so prosperous. It has been so evergreen. It has been such an economic engine for this city, for the state, for this region. I think people view it more in the context of what it has brought the city in terms of money, in terms of prestige. And quite frankly, without this facility behind me, which will be knocked down here in about two minutes, there would be no Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But the evolution of Atlanta, when you think about what this city is now, today here in Thanksgiving week of 2017, as opposed to what it was like during Thanksgiving week of 1989 when they were breaking ground on this facility. I mean, it's such a radically different place. I mean, you know, we've had the Olympics. Uh, the Falcons are, are a completely different organization. Their place in the community is significantly different than it was in 1989. They're the defending NFC champs. In 1989, they were a team getting ready to fire their head coach and Marion Campbell. They were on their way to take on the Jets during Thanksgiving week of 1989, and nobody knew what the history of the franchise would be from there on or what this Georgia Dome would mean, not, not only for what the NFL would be in our city, but what would this facility bring Atlanta in the years ahead? Certainly, as we stand here and we get ready for it to fall in the next minute, we know what it has brought. It has brought so much, so much prosperity to our city. It is, it is sad to see it go, but certainly we will see from here Mercedes-Benz Stadium that will be looming just beyond. So we are going to stay quiet to let you hear all of the noise, all of the energy, and all of the applause as the Georgia Dome falls on a cold Monday morning. Oh yeah. 
it'll be it'll be around a while. Yeah. I don't know what there is to protect. I, I guess they, I guess it's best for me to I'm guessing they did it today because there's no comments. Yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving week. Yeah. All right, folks, welcome back. We continue to cover the Georgia Dome implosion. All right, folks, we are back here. We are live. We are looking live now. We just saw it. All our camera angles, folks. That is the implosion of the Georgia Dome as the dust cloud starts to head right over the top of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Look at the winds kind of blowing that right over Mercedes. They're definitely going to have to do some dusting off of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But uh, what appeared to be a very successful implosion of the Georgia Dome happened about 7.32 in the morning. Another angle right here you can see as that dust cloud continues to move over. In fact, even from our camera, it looks like we're starting to get some of that dust and debris there as well. Now, most of it just imploded directly in as they were planning on it. Not sure if those particular two walls that we're looking at right there were supposed to also fall in. But from our sky tracker angle we saw and the other angles where we're covering it, everything just imploded perfectly inside into the interior of the Georgia Dome. And now all that we're dealing with, the dust cloud, you can see it spreading out in just about all directions, but certainly mainly blowing to the south there. And that's exactly what Chesley McNeil said it would do. We had a northern wind that was blowing, and now that is blowing that dust cloud right over the top of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But this is a live shot from the Sky Tracker, folks. You are uh, you're looking at it. It's gone. The Georgia Dome, a pile of rubble and a dust cloud. Jeff Hollinger, do you have a, a tear in your eye, my friend? Because I know we've both been here for a long time following a lot of events at the Georgia Dome. that facility and now all that remains is the rubble beneath and the plume of smoke which is rising above right now on this very cold morning the traffic now on ivan allen has resumed 
And you know, we have seen a lot of these buildings that have been imploded over the years, whether it's a hotel or other stadiums, but this one was very dramatic. I mean, uh, it, it was really something to see, at least from our perspective here today. I, I don't know what the expectation was of what we were going to see, but instead of hearing a lot of applause and a lot of people hooting and hollering, it was kind of silent here because I, I think it was such an awesome sight, such a, a violent sort of uh, a view of the explosion and the smoke that, uh, that, that rose after that. But uh, it has been quite a show, and now it's business back as usual in Atlanta. People going to work and things getting built. <laughs> Construction continues all around town, and commerce, which defines the city, is now in full swing on this Monday morning. So it will take about four months for Adamo, which is the name of the company out of Detroit that has been in charge of this uh, implosion, to clean up. And they will be able to recycle much of the concrete. They will be able to use it again. And we had someone from the Georgia World Congress Authority speak with us a little bit earlier this morning, about an hour and a half ago, um, just about how this area will be green and how it will be sustainable. And, uh, and, and, and part of that is the fact that this facility was built in 1992. It was finished in 1992. So it, it adhered to a lot of EPA regulations. Uh, you know, it, it didn't have a lot of, of toxins and a lot of groundwater issues that some older stadiums and, and, and certainly some hotels have had around the country where there are real environmental concerns about poisoning the area of which you know, these facilities have, uh, have stood over the decades. But this is a different story here again. You know, this facility was only here 25 years. And again, it had the, the, the latest technology of that time. And as a result, they will be able to use uh, and reuse the concrete and the steel beams as well. I think what's really interesting now is we stand here on Ivan Allen. The wind has taken out some of the smoke. And now, for the first time, we can see uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which is really awe-inspiring. And it is uh, an extraordinary sight, uh, one of which we were unable to see here on Ivan Allen. But now with the Georgia Dome removed and, re you know, uh, uh, sent to a, uh, an ash heap, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, we're able to see the new stadium in its entirety. We still have a lot of people that are here milling around on both sides of Ivan Allen. Uh, traffic is going by on, on both sides. It had been blocked for this implosion, but again, Atlanta police have done a nice job here as always as they are making sure that the traffic is flowing uh, very, very uh, calmly, very admirably. And uh, folks are still just kind of standing around and, and milling about looking at the new stadium, which now has, has peaked through all of the uh, all of the dust, all of the dirt, and all of the smoke. All right, folks, we continue to look at the dust cloud from the Georgia Dome implosion. Uh, from, uh, from all our camera angles, it looks to be a, a fairly successful implosion, although uh, back here at the studio, we're kind of wondering if those two walls, those panels right there, uh, were supposed to come down as well. We can see uh, Jeff Hollinger was just telling us about a lot of the debris. Uh, there you go. You could see it right there from that angle. It almost looks as if... Uh, um, I don't know, no, not sure if maybe that was supposed to fall or not, but uh, from all angles we saw, fairly successful. Everything did implode upon itself. Uh, didn't appear to be uh, anything other than just a dust cloud that flew over towards Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Of course, a lot of the roads that were shut down. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll show it to you right now, folks. Why don't we take, we'll go ahead and take a replay and we'll show, here you go. Starts on the right side of your screen there. You see the puff of smoke and here it goes.
And it's interesting because you see several of those dark panels facing us go right down as well, but two remain standing. Not sure if that was done intentionally or not. Here's another angle, a little bit closer. You see on the right side, the explosion starts. It almost as looks, you could see the flashes going around that ring on the top there, and then everything all at once, including uh, the Teflon roof that was left. Some of the panels that were still on there just kind of goes right down. A lot of that dust just goes straight up. And then as Chesley McNeil told us, we had a northerly wind that was blowing into the south. And that's exactly where that dust cloud went. One more angle. Here we go. Starts on the right side. Puff of smoke. You can kind of see some of the charges lighting off. Another puff of smoke to the left. And then pretty much everything just goes straight down. And again, looks to be pretty successful. And remember, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 83 feet away from that. The dust cloud immediately hitting it. Uh, but certainly they did have up some of those tarps and those black curtains to prevent any debris as we get another angle from the ground here. And look at that, just straight down. A little reminiscent of when they uh, demolished Fulton County Stadium, that kind of went uh, around in a circle, actually. This kind of fell all uh, in one, one piece there. But uh, certainly curious about the two panels that didn't come down here. If you see them right, right here as we're facing it, uh, but I'm sure they'll get out there. And uh, they said three months to completely clear the scene. A lot of debris, a lot of that rebar, and a lot of, uh, a lot of concrete to get out of the way there. And of course, got to get the dust out of the roads as well. You can actually see some of the, looks like some of the, the dust there kind of hit one of our cameras. But there it is again as we, we replay. Jennifer Leslie, I know, has got a great uh, vantage point up on top of the Weston Peachtree Plaza, the Sundial Restaurant. Jay Les, how did it look from 700 feet up? Oh, it is amazing. It was amazing from up here, Crash. And you could hear the excitement. There are 200 people here who are watching it at the Sundial. They all had their cameras or their phones trained on the Georgia Dome. And you could hear the oohs and the ahs and the oh my goshes as the, uh, as the dome imploded. And I heard a lot of them say, wow, that happened so fast. They expected it, even though we kind of gave them the heads up, it would only take 12 seconds they expected it to last longer. I think, you know, you, it's such an enormous structure. How could it really go down that quickly? And yet it did. And now we see the plume of smoke still going. They um, initially expected this uh, smoke to last for about 10 minutes. So this is all part of the planning. Uh, going into this, they had the dust zone and they um, checked the winds and they, you know, let people all around this area know what to expect. So they wanted no surprises. And I think the only surprise was just a delay by a minute or two, I believe, at the implosion. So we had to let people here know they were checking their phones, checking the time, really ready for that 7.30 to get started. And um, But when it went down, you could hear the uh, explosions up here, even through these uh, thick glass uh, windows. And what an exciting time it was to be here. Again, they sold out this watch party. This was the best seat in the house, as far as I'm concerned, it, the best seat in town. And they sold out a couple of weeks ago, 200 people here to um, enjoy a breakfast buffet and, and get quite a view of this implosion. There are folks here I, um, who have been waiting. They've brought their children, they've brought their friends and made this really a family affair. Come from afar. I talked to a gentleman from North Carolina who came down here to make sure he could get this uh, front row seat to this implosion. And what an experience it was. You can see the smoke starting to clear away from the actual dome site now. And look what's left. Oh, look at what's left. Um, you know, this will take months to clear, three months to clear. Um, and they're actually going to crush uh, this concrete, uh, much of it here, and use it as the base for the new parking area and the green space and the hotel. And look, you can see people cannot take their eyes off. They still want to watch. They still want to see what's happening out there. This is the observation level of the Sundial restaurant. It's three levels, three tiers. This is the middle tier. And down below, the windows are just as crowded. People had their cameras right up against the windows so that they wouldn't get a glare and wouldn't have any obstruction to this perfect view from on high. We are 73 floors up. Interesting to note that all these windows are relatively new. After the Atlanta tornado came in March of 2008, it blew out more than 200 of the windows here on the West End. So the entire building, the entire hotel went through a facelift. 
and uh, we are looking through those new windows here as we watch what's left of the Georgia Dome. Just the concrete and, and steel uh, that you can see is left behind. And in the Mercedes Benz Stadium next door, uh, certainly does not seem to have taken a ding which is exactly uh, as planned. So here we are, seven degrees up as we look down. All right, Jennifer, thank you. I'm Jeff Hollinger. We're along Ivan Allen. We're with the family from Marietta. What is your name? Brian Morris. Brian Morris, introduce me to your family, if you would. This is Kelly. This is Brayden, and this is Gabriella. Gabriella, what did you think of what you saw when that dome came tumbling down? It was really cool to see, like, it just, like, collapsed just after two big blows. Are you glad that you got up early to do this? Yes. It was worth it? Uh-huh. Do you think you'll remember it 10 years from today? Yes. You guys are saying all the right things, you know <laughs> that? When uh, did you decide that you were going to come down here? Did you have to sort of talk everybody into it? I did. They were worried about it being cold, and uh, we uh, all braved it this morning, got up and made it happen. We have, uh, she's got a, a hurt foot, but she made it, walked, and we're all super happy we came. It was amazing. Sounds like this was your husband's idea, but you're probably <laughs> pretty happy at this point that you came. Really happy. It was his idea. I wasn't sure about coming, but we're glad we made it. You guys have a good view? Perfect view right here over the bridge. Yeah, absolutely. It was wonderful. So you're parked where now? Um, down the street. Way? Not not too far. <laughs> quarter mile, maybe. All right. So you begin the day with an implosion. What else are you planning on doing today? Anything fun? Um, you guys I, are out of school, right? Yeah. Yes, we are. All right. Well, go have breakfast somewhere. Yeah, and you can watch the Falcons today. Yeah, watch the Falcons today. You can bill it to Channel 11 and say that you've been working on TV and that builds up an appetite. Absolutely. We'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a safe trip back home to Marietta. We appreciate it. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right. So we have had an active morning this morning and, uh, you know, we've had the opportunity to see the implosion and, and let's show some replays. I mean, this is, this is something you're going to be seeing over and over and over. It took 12 seconds and it took four months of planning. It took 35,000 hours of a workforce making sure that everything was set and ready to go and fall. And there was a lot of drama, a lot of theater. There's nothing quite like an implosion. You know, whether you see a, a hotel or you see an old bank or you see a stadium, the stadiums seem to be the best ones. I, I, I have become an expert on implosions in Atlanta because, you know, that's what we like to do around here. We like to blow things up real good, and then we like to build things real good. And, and certainly we saw Atlanta Fulton County Stadium a few years ago. That was really an amazing implosion. We also saw the Omni a few years ago. Uh, and and this, was, this was pretty darn good, pretty, pretty exciting as far as implosions go. Not that I am an expert on that, but I certainly do have some experience like many of you do as well. All right, we will take a break in the proceedings and we will come back and continue to wrap it up. What really excites me about the late feed is that every day we start with a blank slate. There is no formula for our show. We're not just going to tell you about what happened. We want to find out how it happened, why it happened, and tell the story a little bit differently. We care about using cage-free eggs. And we care about amazing taste. Because at Hellman's, we're on the side of food. We traveled the world sampling the best cheese for two reasons. One, to bring them all back for you to enjoy. And two, we got to eat a bunch of really good cheese along the way. Publix Deli Specialty Cheese. Over 36 varieties to fall in love with. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Maybe you run, or just run errands. Either way, you're moving. 
But what if you were told you need a joint replaced or back surgery? You go to Emory Orthopedics, with locations all across Atlanta, and the only hospital specifically designed for spine, hip, and knee surgery, where patient satisfaction is higher than anywhere else in the state. That's the Emory difference. To keep moving forward, start here. Do you recognize symptoms like these in your crawl space? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, because not a lot of people spend time in their crawl space. These symptoms are a result of extremely high humidity conditions, causing an explosion of mold growth resulting in contaminated air that your family is breathing every day. Let AquaGuard show you how we can transform your crawl space into healthy, clean space like this and save you up to 25% on your energy bills. Call us today for a free evaluation. Mom still thinks Burlington is the place for coats. This time of year, she's absolutely right. Coats for play, work, the weekend. Burlington may not be called Coat Factory anymore. But they still have lots and lots of coats. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers, absolutely accurate. Your parents love their grandkids, but what if they tried to use the law to take your kids from you? Can they even do that? In Georgia, they can. We'll show you just how far one father went to keep his child. Tonight on The Late Feed. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeff Hellinger on this cold Monday morning in Atlanta. If you missed the implosion about a half hour ago, don't worry. We got you covered right here, right now. How about another look? And by the end of the day, you will have seen this as many times as you can handle. But quite frankly, it never gets old. It is something to see all the dynamite charges that bring down the Georgia Dome, all of the years, all of the months of planning that it took to put that thing up in the late 80s into the early 90s. And in 12 seconds, presto, it is gone. Reduced to rubble and a plume of smoke that covered the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And now that $1.5 billion stadium takes center stage here in Atlanta, and it has the area alone. Jennifer Leslie is at the Westin, and she has had one of the really wonderful views of the implosion today. Jennifer? Jeff, not only did we get an amazing view of the implosion, but now we have a really great view of what's left. And this is probably going to sound a little too dramatic, but it almost looks like Roman ruins. Um, it's really, you can see the sunlight beaming down on part of it, so you can really get a good view. You can see what's left. There are some part of the structure, the, the front face with the striping, that part is still standing. And it's so interesting to see what's still there and what's left as the smoke plume has cleared away and now the real work begins to move all of this debris to crush a lot of the concrete creep down into place to serve as the base for the green space parking and hotel that will rise up from the ashes here if you will um, it was really so incredible to watch this with 200 guests here on the 73rd floor of the Westin Peachtree Plaza the Sundial restaurant they bought tickets sold out a couple of weeks ago and this was uh, perhaps the best seat in town to watch. You could hear the oohs and the ahs and the oh my goshes as it went off. Everybody surprised by how quickly the dome went down. Even though we were given plenty of heads up that it would only take 12 seconds, it seemed to go by in a flash. And wow, it was remarkable and a piece of history. There's a gentleman here who um, m m wanted to make a point of seeing this firsthand from this view. He was uh, eyewitness to the implosion of the Fulton County, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. And this uh, was another marker, another time that he wanted to, to mark. And here he is with his son watching this. People came in from North Carolina, came in from all around to get this incredible view of this moment, this historic moment. So here we are. You can see what's left. Uh, there's a lot left, although it is remarkable how much has come down. Um, and the plume of smoke well uh, off dissipating. And the real work, Jeff, begins now for these uh, demolition crews. The cleanup work now begins. All right, Jennifer, thank you. One of the...
Okay. One, one of the uh, interesting aspects for those of us along Ivan Allen is we are standing on these risers that they have put up here, the Georgia World Congress Authority had put up for, you know, a bevy of reporters and photographers and all. We have a really clear sight of the implosion. And as we got to about five seconds away, a giant MARTA bus pulls up and the woman who's driving the MARTA bus stops, just dead stops right in the middle of the street, blocking about 85% of the photographers who had spent, you know, three or four hours here setting up. Uh, some very unhappy photographers, but nonetheless uh, amusing in the sense of, you know, you, you plan and you plan and you plan to cover these kinds of things, and then one MARTA bus makes sure that your view is not exactly as you had projected it. But everything is gone according to Hoyle. We are going to hear uh, in the next few minutes from the Adamo company uh, is going to give a briefing about how all of this went. You know, as we take a look on social media, there have been a lot of questions about the two screens or the two kinds of pillars that have remained. And we certainly will ask the question if that was by design or if perhaps uh, that was uh, uh, something that didn't go as well as they thought. But, uh, uh, you know, it's amazing. 83 feet separated Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 1.5 billion and the Georgia Dome, and they were able to, to blow it up and uh, and it, it fell down exactly as they wished, and, and it doesn't look like there was any damage to anything uh, surrounding the stadium. It's amazing how they were able to do that. All right, that is a heck of a way to usher in Thanksgiving week here in Atlanta. There's a lot of kids are out of school and maybe a little less traffic in downtown Atlanta. That's, that's certainly one good thing today that has made this uh, a little bit easier, I think, for Atlanta police and certainly for MARTA as well. But uh, it has been an event and a great way to, uh, to usher in the holidays. The choreography almost as good as the Nutcracker. Hey, that is it for the 11 Alive team. We really appreciate you watching us this morning. And we will now join the Today Show after these commercials. We will see you at 5, 6, 10 o'clock on WATL and the late feed on 11 Alive. So we have you covered. We will see you later in the day as Thanksgiving 2017 rolls toward Atlanta. the same. The traditional format. The same type of stories every day. It's time for something different. A better way to start your day. Keeping you on top of the trend. Wake up and get in on the morning rush. Why call Precision Garage Door for your garage door trouble? Because they fix it right the first time. Call this week only and receive a free service call with any repair. Backed by the Precision Warranty. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. Thanksgiving. It's part of the fabric and culture of our country. What a great time for families to reconnect. Not only does Thanksgiving build the bonds of family, but our neighborhoods and communities as well. This week at Ingalls, Honeysuckle White Grade A Frozen Turkey, 48 cents per pound. Select 26 ounce chock full of nuts coffee, 598 each, and 24 count .5 liter Nestle Pure Life Water, two for $5. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. There are 10,987 professional magicians. Make your business stand out with the beautiful website. Make it Squarespace. A Black Friday sales event. It's Landmark's Doorbuster Madness sales event. A sale so powerful, it makes Black Friday look like a sunny day. How crazy are we? How low will we go? Crazier than anybody and lower than anybody. That's how we got to be number one in 